How we do in Salisbury? My mama told me when I was young, we were all born superstars. Yeah. Oh, my hair, put my lipstick on. Yeah. Baby, can I love her? for the first ever Salisbury Pride Parade, and I'm going to be your uh, MC for the rest of the uh, day, right here, live on the Piedmont stage. Give it up for our sponsor, Piedmont, for sponsoring this beautiful stage. Um, it was awesome, guys. I had a really fun experience today. Just here in support, checking out what's going on, because I know this is our first Pride celebration, so I wanted to see how this would go more so, <laughs> and to just kind of check it out and show my support. This is actually my first pie I've ever been to, yeah. And what, and what did you think of it? It was fun, everybody was here and, I mean, <laughs> gay, straight, in between, everybody was here and it was very safe and inclusive and it was a really fun time. I can speak for the community when I tell you that the Pride Parade and just Pride Parades in general around the world are, they mean so much to the community, they mean they mean love, they mean care. It shows people coming here, you can be yourself. I mean, I've seen sides of people here that I haven't ever seen with them outside of here. You know, I've got to know people more because they're around people that they can relate to and that they can trust. I am a graduate of Salisbury University and I'm here because I'm part of the LGBTQ plus community and I've never been to Pride before and I wanted to come to Pride. I am overjoyed for the, for the if you're going to use an adjective. Um, it's been a long process and it's been a long road and a lot of things have been thrown in that road to create issues and I always say bef in, in the before times, BC before COVID, that we had the issue of being able to like try to make this work kind of an issue but then COVID hit pushed it out of the water, a lot of things bucked up against us, but you just keep swimming, you keep pushing, and uh, determination works, and here we are. Um, I heard about it about right before the pandemic hit, they were planning it, and then sadly they had to cancel everything because of COVID, so I've heard about it probably for about three years now. So 
Uh, much like everybody else, I thought it was overdue, but also super excited. How it looks right now is, is what we imagined it would look like, and I know it's going to continue to get uh, fuller as the day goes on. Um, like most people, the anticipation has been high because we have had to change the date a couple of times, but we're here now and we're really excited. So much, you know, like now, we were really excited when we started, when we started initially planning and to now see it come together is amazing. When the parade actually started, I think I was over by the, the political people, like talking to the Democrats and stuff like that over there. And, and uh, so the parade started going down and um, it was exciting. I, I, I mean, the parade was short and sweet. It was um, a lot of, uh, you know, people just, um, you know, waving and showing flags and things like that. But it was nice that they had it. And that was the exciting part. So um, I really enjoyed the parade, watching it and um, looking forward to seeing it grow. I really liked the parade. It was a good, a good different mix of individuals, of political officials or different organizations, nonprofits, businesses. It, it's a good spread against the community on you know what the community actually represents. So it was good to have that cross section visualized. I watched it go by. Um, I was actually very shocked when I saw a church that was in the parade because churches have been something that's so controversial for pride and for the community. So it was very. I don't know, it was just so calming. It made me feel so like at home, just seeing that there are people there that accept us that you wouldn't really expect. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's, it, it, it definitely means a lot. It's somewhere that I can express who I am and really just be proud of it, because there's other people who feel the same or you know, in different ways. Um, and it's a really great way to connect to the community and there's just so much love and appreciation at these events for everyone and their identities, so. It's great. I, it's hot. Hot. But yes. <laughs> very, very hot. Um, definitely going to try and bring a ton of water next year, but. <laughs> and I competed in the Miss Pride of Salisbury pageant and I'm part of the House of Fisher in Salisbury. So last night I won the newcomer category, so I am your new Miss Pride of Salisbury 2022, and it was amazing. Uh, I've been to their like monthly meetings, like that they have sometimes. How have those gone? Those have gone good. Like we they, we talk about different things, like um, like different topics and stuff, like whatever's in the community, whatever, whatever people are talking about, like in the community. So I think one time there was like um, there might be like parents there adjusting to like their kids coming out, like learning how to like talk to them and stuff like that, learning how to like, I guess, adjust to it. She was scared. I was, didn't want to tell me. I was a little scared. You know, you hear all this stuff online about people getting kicked out of their house and you never think that that's going to happen to you, but there's always this small voice in your head that says, you know, what she if? She should have known. She should have known that I would never. Yeah, know. but you hear everything and it's, it's scary. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she was a little, I had to find out kind of like um, through her friends and through talk and like listening to conversations and then she finally told me and I was like, why would you be afraid to tell me that? And I guess it's just more her that she was just afraid to speak up, afraid of what judgment, not just from me, but like everybody in the family and, and friends and things like that, so. Yeah, so about, actually this month marks my second year of being out, um, which I don't, I don't remember the day, so I just kind of used the whole month as a, but um, yeah, I started questioning like two years and a bit ago. And so the first thing I did was I was like looking up different terms and like different sexualities and gender identities and trying to compare them to how I felt. Um, even though it's all relative, like one definition might mean something to someone and then a different thing to another person. But, um, and at first I was non-binary for a while, for probably the first year, uh, which means I don't, I didn't identify as a boy or a girl. It was rather both for me, personally. But um, it changed about a year ago and um, now I am just a dude, a fella. <laughs> um, I don't really know what clicked, to be honest. I think it just, you feel one way and it's like, yeah, this is right. Like, it hasn't changed since. I feel like as a queer child, I feel like everyone knows. I feel like when you're young, you, you know it and then you grow up to learn to hide it. Um, I think that 
coming out is such a, a difficult process. But for me, I come from such a, a tough background, you could say. Um, but coming out was actually one of the most liberating things that I've ever done. Um, and at first, no one called me by my preferred name or pronouns. And my parents were absolutely like, they, did not, they didn't want to call me that ever. And my dad kind of definitely put it down like, this is what, how, it, how it works. This is what you are. And, um, but I think definitely there's been a lot of growth from my parents over the past two years. My mom is very open-minded. She's a very open-minded person. And she's, I feel like she's tried to educate herself and learn a lot. And so is my dad. It's just, he doesn't show it in the same ways. Um, but yeah, I'm really proud of them for being open-minded. And I'm proud of myself for, you know, hanging in there. So whereas the city of Salisbury has a diverse lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, queer questioning community and is committed to supporting visibility, dignity and equity for all people in the community. Woo! And many of the residents, students, city employees and business owners within the city of Salisbury who contribute to the enrichment of our LGBTQ community and various advancements have been made with respect to equitable treatment of lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, and questioning persons throughout the nation, but there continues to be some opposition against people from the LGBTQ community, making it important for cities like Salisbury to stand up and show support for our affected residents. And whereas cities across the United States recognize and celebrate June as LGBTQ Pride Month, and June has become a symb symbolic month in which our LGBTQ persons and supporters come together in various celebrations of pride. And the rainbow flag, also known as the LGBTQ pride flag or gay pride flag, has been used since the 1970s as a symbol of LGBTQ social movements, and which proudly flies right there above our government office building. And whereas this year, the city of Salisbury will host its first ever pride parade and festival in downtown Salisbury today, now, therefore, I, Jake Day, Mayor of the City of Salisbury, do hereby proclaim June 2022 as LGBTQ Pride Month in our city. And I invite everyone to reflect on ways we can all live and work together with a commitment to mutual respect and understanding as the city recognizes Pride Month by flying the rainbow flag on the downtown plaza during the month of June. I hereby present this proclamation to Mark Delancey. And let me say this, let us be a city and a nation that not only lives and let lives, that not only loves and let loves, that will not only be and let be, but will stand up for each other and fight for each other. In every imaginable way and for every right that each human being deserves. God bless y'all, have fun today. That's been great, I mean, it's, it was nice. I got, a, I got a chance to like walk in the parade, so that was cool. Um, and it's just nice to see all these bright colors and smiling faces, and it's, it's nice. Um, well, one of my friends asked me to participate in it, um, I think with Heather, um, and I said, sure, so. When I first came out in college, there was only LGBT. Now, we've got the whole alphabet, and you know why? Because our community recognizes the importance that all of our liberation is wrapped up with each other. Everybody's. We're not free unless all of us are free to express who we are, how we love, and for each of us to have equal protections under the law. When I was in the General Assembly, I was proud to be at the leading edge of making sure that we in Maryland passed marriage equality. Now listen, folks, I don't have to tell you that what happened in the Supreme Court yesterday was a deep blow and a sucker punch to all of us. To every woman or person who can carry a child who is now going to have government-mandated pregnancies, this is a serious, serious moment. But I also stand here to say, we will not back down! 
Um, I think the celebration is important because it, um, it just shows people like that there are LGBTQ plus people in the community. Because um, I think some people might feel like they don't exist here, but like, you can see that there's a lot of people that support um, the LGBTQ people and stuff. Um, so I kind of moved all over the place. I started off with the food vendors, I went up to the stage to hear some of the entertainment. I spent a good deal of time at the kid zone with my niece, and then we kind of made our way back up to the stage. So I experienced a little bit of everything, being able to connect with people, you know, who I have seen or I haven't seen. Um, yeah, a little bit of everything. Um, I started off with the uh, face painting, and so they covered up my scars and they gave me a little star and made me look pretty. <laughs> And then um, I walked around and, and visited several booths. Um, one of the memorable booths for me was the Chamber of Commerce booth, uh, where we talked about, um, you know, business opportunities and networking. Um, and then uh, I went to the Foster uh, family booth, and I talked to the lady about possibly becoming a foster parent. Um, I went down some more, uh, looked at some jewelry because I love shiny trinkets, and so. Um, there was a lot of cool jewelry and um, plants and things like that here. So I, I talked to a plant lady about plants. I uh, saw a bunch of performances. Um, Magnolia Applebottom, she started it off. Got their booties dancing out on the street of Salisbury. How are we doing out there, everybody? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Salisbury Pride. Again, I am your host and MC, Grand Marshal Magnolia Applebottom, all the way from Hobart Beach, Delaware. Lovely to meet you. Thank you for having me. It's an honor to be here. Okay, so uh, this is my Hoochie Daddy outfit. Okay, um, I love like uh, crop tops and cutouts and things like that. And so I thought this would be really fun. It's um, a shirt I got from Five Below that I kind of uh, doctored up a little bit and some cutout shorts. And um, you know, short shorts are in this year. So I was like, let me be bold and brave and show it all. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was going to wear this outfit originally, but um, I, in light of the fact that I just recently was attacked um, and, and just wearing regular clothes and things like that, I'm really not sure um, safety wise if this is a good move for me to wear this. Uh, my name is Sonny Graham. I was born actually under a different name. My name was Marvin Graham when I was born. Um, but my family always called me Sonny. Um, and later on in life, I ended up changing my name to Sonny. Um, I was born in Chevrolet, Maryland, um, and uh, for the first three years of my life, I lived in Detroit, Michigan, because that's where my dad was from. This is a picture of my dad. He, he just, this was his house before me, so he passed away. Very nice guy. Um, he was uh, retired from the Air Force, and he was a pharmacy tech there, then he worked at Dave Co. for 22 years, and then he worked at uh, Gateway Subaru. Um, bef before he retired. So he used to sell cars and he was a collector and so he would take like pictures of keys with every person that he ever had a car. They were all upstairs, like all of it. So he's crazy. But, um, but you know, he drank a little bit because he had, he had a lot to deal with in life and so that was his thing. And my dad, um, my dad, I don't know, like I, I used to come here and visit on the summers and stuff like that and I stayed with him briefly for one little period and um, I had made out with this guy in a cornfield somewhere. And so, um, I, you know, this is a small town where everybody knows everybody or whatever. So apparently people were abuzz talking about what I had did in the cornfields. So he came to talk to me about what I had did in the cornfields. And I was like, Dad, leave me alone. I pay my own bills. I don't, <laughs> you know. And he was like, okay then. Well, just, you know, just kind of be careful with what you're doing out in these cornfields out here these days. And I was like, all right, cool. But he never really gave me a hard time about it or anything. So uh, that was cool. But like this is this is my kids when they were little bit I had taken them to the to the zoo. And so we took this picture here. And that's when they were cute and adorable. <laughs> and now they just ask for money. Uh, so I um, my ex wife told me to to have a conversation with them because family members were talking. And so she wanted me to um, to talk to them first because she felt like it'd be better if I told them uh, versus them hearing stories from other people and then 
getting whatever spin they had on it. So I did. I sat them down and I told them that, you know, you know, we kind of, because they were younger. It was like my daughter was nine, my son was 12. And we kind of like had a little birds and the bees talk. And then I talked to them about how some people are attracted to girls. And, you know, that's boys are attracted to girls, you know, and girls are attracted to guys. And some guys are attracted to girls and guys. And I was one of those guys. And so it was just like a lot. And the kids were like, you know, we didn't really need to know all this. Like, we're too little for this. Like, <laughs> so, um, so it was interesting. And in, and in a way, like, I don't really, like, I told my son, because he was like, he said something that hurt me deeply, two things, and I always remembered them. And so he was like that, you know, whenever you see stuff on TV, there's always, there's the, the guy and the girl, there's the prince and the princess. And, you know, even in fairy tales and everything, it's always, you know, there's always the prince and the princess, never the prince and the prince. And so he said, everything that I hear about gay people at school is always bad. And he's like, I, um, he's like, I always wanted to be like you, but I don't want to be like you now. And so that really, really hurt me. Um, and I told him, I said, you know, nothing about me has changed, you know? And so even though, you know, I, I like who I like, it's still, I'm still the same dad that I always was. Like every day that you go to sleep, I still love you as your father. And that is who I am, you know? So nothing, nothing about me being a father has changed for you. It's just, you know, it's just me being honest about who I like and that's that. And so this is my office space. Um, and uh, so some of the cool things in this office space that I like are um, these are my paddles from my fraternity. Um, I'm a part of an uh, NPHC uh, fraternity called Iota Phi Theta fraternity. My dad's old typewriter. Um, it was really cool. He kept a lot of antiques and stuff like that. So I kept it because it looked totally awesome. Not that I actually use it or know how to. <laughs> but um, and then this is um, this is my poetry book that I published um, in 2016. Um, it's just a collection of poet, poems and things like that. It's called Genuine Interchange. Um, it's available on, online or whatever. And so it just, um, I, I have a little piece that talks about my, my life and my background and just different sections of life. And it's all in poetry and some are silly and some are more serious. So dating in Salisbury for a gay guy is, mm, it's, it's a challenge. Um, there's the apps where you meet the most uncomfortable people. Um, and uh, that hasn't been a good experience. Um, so I got off the apps about two months ago because I'm not into bedroom culture. And I'm really like, I want to meet somebody I'm in my 40s. I'm not like just looking to hook up and do whatever. And so that's what I was running into. And a lot of guys here are closeted. Their family doesn't know or whatever the heck. And they don't really want to be out here because of the community. The area itself is not really gay friendly. They're about like 20 years back. Um, and the sexual revolution, it's, it's a, a big city geographically, but a small town mindset. Um, it's a pretty like retirement type of community. So it's a kind of older, older crowd versus um, younger people who may not have the same attitudes as their parents do. But, um, but there's still a very big church presence here. And um, especially for African-Americans, it's very conservative minded. So... Um, and they have like a Haitian community here that works at the, the local plants and things like that. So there's all different type of dynamics to this little city, but they do overall have a small town mindset and they're not the most, um, you know, gay friendly place. In the downtown areas I've been hearing from talking to some people that it's pretty liberal. Um, but when you go to the outskirts, it can get, it can get totally different. Yeah, so uh, the last day of school, um, I, it was also my birthday. My coworkers threw me this awesome birthday party at school. Um, they got me a cake and we played games and everything and everything was going really great. I went out to brew, which was actually one of my favorite bars here in town because, um, they have great like deals and, um, happy hour. And it's always been a pretty much, uh, uh, friendlier crowd there. So, um, I was out with some coworkers and we went to brew. We had a good time. They started to leave out probably around like nine o'clock. And, um, and so I hung back a little bit because it's my birthday and I just wanted to have an awesome day and I was having a great time. And so 
Um, I'm leaving out from uh, Brew River at probably about like 10 o'clock and I'm in my car and I heard these guys talking about this other club. And so me just being social me, I was just like, hey, what, what, what club is that? And so the guy came over and he started talking with me and he was telling me about the club and I was like, oh, okay. And he, I said, I hadn't heard of the club before. And he said, oh, it's just up there past Market Street. And I was like, oh, okay, I know that area, but I'm newer here. So I really don't know, you know, too many places and stuff. And um, he just casually asked me, he said, uh, are you gay? And I said, yeah. And so and the next thing I know, he was like pummeling me. He was like punching me in my face and I'm in the car already. So um, I was in shock a little bit. I didn't, I was like, I was in feeling threatened by him. So I didn't know that that was going to happen. And I drove off. And, um, and so first thing I wanted to do was just get somewhere safe. So I drove home and, um, and my face, my face at that time was like pouring down with blood and everything. And, um, and so I came upstairs and I was laying on my bed and I called my, um, my girlfriend from work, Allie. And I told her, I said, I got attacked. And she was just like, really? What? When? Why? And so she, she told me to take a picture. And so I, I sent her a picture of me and I had like blood covered all over my face at the time. And so she was like, oh my God, you're going to have to go to the hospital. And so um, she called another co coworker of ours um, named Chloe. And Chloe came over and picked me up and she took me to the hospital in the ER. And I spent about four hours in there. Um, and that's when I filed the police report in the hospital. And um, they came in. Took, asked me some questions. And to be honest, I couldn't even tell you a lot of details about the guy. I wasn't, I wasn't flirting with him or hitting on. I wasn't even looking for details, really. I was just having a casual conversation, and I didn't expect anything like that to happen. So it happened so quickly. Um, I, I, I don't really remember a lot of details. Like if he came, if I saw him again, I probably couldn't even point him out to you because he was just with a, a group of guys, and they were outside talking. And so I was pulling off, and I rolled the window down, and I'm you know, thinking, like, the night is young, and I still might go out somewhere else. And heard them talking about the bar, so I asked a couple questions, and then next thing I know, I'm under attack. So I didn't really, I didn't, I, I didn't pay attention to a lot of the details that I probably should have because I wasn't feeling threatened. Um, and so. Uh, fortunately, the, the cops were like, yeah, well, there's cameras around there. And so we'll check out the surveillance cameras. And even if we catch that person, we can roll back the cameras to get them inside where we can get a better look at them or whatever. So they said they would let me know. Um, they called me like two days later and told me they were actually going to brew. And um, I haven't heard back from them since, but I haven't followed up either. So it's still just only been a week. So I'll probably give them a call back and see what's going on. So... We, I actually just recently heard of one, actually, of a person that had an experience where someone asked if they were gay and they were assaulted. Um, outside of that, I had not heard a lot of personal experiences outside of verbal attacks, of course, but I never heard anything physical like that until just recently. Um, I feel like it's been pretty accepting here for the most part. Um... It hasn't, I feel a little bit more comfortable across the bridge, across the Chesapeake Bay Bridge, but um, uh, I haven't been like, I guess, made fun of or threatened. Although I think one time I was walking down the road and I had like these short, like yellow shorts on and like one guy yelled like the F word like in this car as he's passing by. So that was one experience. Other than that, like I haven't had any other crazy experiences. They were just driving by and yelled it out. Yeah, yeah. But what did you do? I just, I just kind of ignored it, yeah. Have you ever been called any names before? Um, you mean down here in the Eastern Shore? Or anywhere? Um, yeah. And how did you really respond to it? Uh, I just try to ignore it. I will say this. I think that Salisbury has done a great job of curating this culture of inclusion and equity and celebrating differences. And so sometimes it makes you forget where we are. Uh, so sometimes Salisbury makes us feel like, yes, it, we have evolved a lot and the shore is becoming more progressive but I think that when you look at those pockets outside of Salisbury like on the outskirts you're reminded that mm, depends on who you're asking um, but I think as I said speaking as a black um, queer woman I think there has been some evolution but I think we still have a lot of work to do. I've always felt comfortable being who I am. Now, being comfortable being who I am in this place, 
I'd say about 80% of the time. I have run into those uncomfortable situations, but I was raised with a really good backbone, so I've always felt comfortable being me, honestly. Um, I came out probably around when gay marriage was legalized in all 50 states. Um, I changed my profile picture to the rainbow filter as everyone else did and that was kind of like my coming out and I was very privileged to be accepted by all my friends and family in Pocomoke and, <laughs> and I actually won prom king when I was in oh high school God, and everything. I was, I was very, very grateful. A lot of people don't have that experience but I did and I was very accepted and I'm honored for that. So. So it was actually, it was pretty rough for most of the year, to be honest. I, I was out in seventh grade, but I wasn't really very vocal about it, or I didn't, I didn't tell people. It took me a while to be able to bring up the courage to tell people, hi, I identify as a male, and my name is Finn, and I use he, him pronouns. It took a long time for it to get to that point, and it just kind of started in eighth grade, where all of the staff knew me as Finn, all my teachers, my friends, and everyone was calling me that. And so I just kind of fit in more in eighth grade, but um, for most of eighth grade, there was issues with these kids that sit in the back of my bus and they would pretty much bully me and my other queer friends that I have on the bus. And I kind of spent the whole year just kind of putting my head down and taking it. But um, I recently, at, you know, at the very end of the school year, it's probably three days left, but um, I decided to go to the guidance counselor and tell them about what was happening. And we had a conversation with them, and they apologized. And it actually sounded like really genuine, and um, I should have done that a long time ago. So, yeah, I'm very thankful for my guidance counselors at my school. Pocomoke High School is definitely one of the most accepting schools of um, of the Eastern Shore, I can say. We have a group called Speak Up that I am proudly the president of, um, where we continuously fight for equality and just we speak up for minorities. Oh yeah, oh yeah. And I, even where I like I work now, everybody's so accepting now. And it's, it's getting awesome. better. It's getting so much it's getting better. better. Even when I first got down here, and I may have said this earlier, but just seeing all the colorful outfits and seeing people be so vibrant and so open and bold and just themselves, uh, it was truly unlike anything that I've ever seen before. Uh, so just seeing it all come together, really, and seeing more people than what we expected, for sure, was definitely a beautiful thing to see how much support we had. I think it sends the message that we're here, right? We're here, we exist, we support anyone who is within the community. Um, also gives room for allies, right, to also show up and to be a part of that message. And it's clear, the message is clear. The LGBTQ plus community is here, deserving of space, deserving of respect. And, you know, for those who may be looking for their community or who may be looking for their people, this is a good place to start, just to raise awareness about LGBTQ plus identities and experiences. Um, and so pride is a huge manifestation of the work that has been done. Organizers and activists who have been raising awareness on the shore for so long and those who have sacrificed their own safety and well-being for the cause. So I think, you know, today is a manifestation of all of that. Um, probably at like 16 and having my driver's license for a few months, I would love to come to an event like this. Like, I would love to sneak away from from my from Pocomoke and be able to come to an event like this. So, honestly, we're making history here, being here today as the first ever Salisbury Pride. I mean, it's something that I hope goes on for years and years and makes the youth feel safe to be able to come out to something like this and find themselves. Really, today's experience was like loving and supportive, and very fun and friendly. Yes, and he has the fan here to prove it. And uh, I am a fan of that fan. That fan is beautiful. And um, yes. And so um, it was just a wonderful occasion. I just, I just had a great time. Um, I felt me. I felt proud to be in Salisbury and like I had a space and a place and um, it was welcoming. Um, it was so many different groups of people and I was actually surprised at the good turnout that they had for the first time. This is a huge turnout for a first event. So. Kudos to them, and it was a really great day. Tell me, welcome to the stage, Salisbury locals.
the Jerome Kelly Band. How y'all doing, Salisbury? Make some noise. Yeah, I like that, I like that. We're Jerome and the band. We're original sound, original lyrics, original music, and we thank you for the opportunity for letting us come and perform for y'all. The first song is, is gonna be called Be You. The simplest things like representation mean so much. Just having a, a, a gay flag or uh, on your business or a gay uh, space at your school or a, a, a pride event can mean tons to somebody in a neighborhood where they feel disenfranchised, where they feel alone, where they don't feel represented. You know, just seeing this, I don't care if it's two people out here, just having this event means something to the people who are here. You know, and it means that there's a space for us, that we're included, that we are a part of the community, that, um, that we are here, and we're not going anywhere, you know, and, and creates conversation. So, so you may not be um, comfortable with us, but the fact that you're not comfortable with us, it, 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 it's not my fault. That's your issue, okay? We're here. And we exist too, and we deserve the same spaces and rights and places that you do. So we need to be seen just like everybody else. So throw a stone if you want, I'm gonna throw it back. Okay? <laughs> And just for audio, can you tell me what you had for breakfast? Uh, I had a fish stick. <laughs> <laughs> and a shot. <laughs> Breakfast of champions. Yeah, there you go.